in most companies, social and social media is kind of everybody's problem. And when it's everybody's problem, it's usually nobody's problem. <laughs> and so uh, you, you don't really have the CMO or the CIO or the CRO or COO taking ownership of this. And because there is not that ownership um, below the CEO, you know, there's a lot more uh, coordination that needs to happen, education that needs to happen before it can be. At Sprinkler, we have what we call as a maturity model for becoming customer first, which is what you have to do in a social world. And there are four stages of maturity. We think 90% of the brands that are at stage two, um, and there's a few that are in stage three and almost no one's at stage four. So we think the market's very early. I think everyone understand that, understands that something needs to be done. I think there's a lack of understanding on what needs to be done and a lack of understanding of what it takes. Social media is creating internal pressure within large companies to work together to take care of the customer. If you think about large global businesses, they are really fragmented, they are really siloed. And they're siloed for a reason, because that's how you scale a company. Um, you know, if you wanna scale in Europe, then you open a, you know, a French office and you hire a French managing director um, you hire someone in Germany and they splinter up and they, they create uh, products and services and uh, you know support and marketing for that market. And in that process they get siloed from each other and they have no reason to work with each other. And today it's impossible for a good marketing team not to be aligned with the customer care team or the advertising team um, because your ad is going to show up on the right pane and your marketing messages, you know, organic content is going to show up in the middle. Um, and you might have posted a coupon, but your customers may be complaining underneath it. So you really have to work across these silos. Um, and the key word is work across them, coordinate across them. Now, word of mouth is so powerful. So if you have a great product, you have raving fans, people telling everyone else, uh, you get a lot of free marketing. You know, it will be you know, worth a lot of traditional media dollars for you. On the flip side, if people don't like your product, you're toast, right? And you have, you, you're increasingly gonna find it harder to advertise or market. Key is to come up with a new way to market. The key is to understand and have an infrastructure to to, to keep on understanding, because it's not like I do research and I now know, well, this guy likes my product. He may change his mind <laughs> a week from now. He may hear from someone else, um, you know, and change his mind. So we have been driven by where our clients wanted us to be, uh, primarily. And, and then within those demand drivers. We try and pick, pick, to pick markets where we think we, we can get the most traction in the shortest period of time. Now, obviously, there are nuances. Um, you know, we're in Brazil, South America. The economy is not doing well. Um, in China, trying to be in social media has got a different set of issues that, that, that it brings along with it. Um, and we believe that it helps to be on the right end of this transformation. You know, if you are a, in a you're in traditional media, <laughs> you're gonna find it very hard pressed to, to go into these new markets. In most of these places, even when the economy is not doing well, people are moving money from traditional media and how they've spent it traditionally to the new world. And social and digital and mobile is a new world. 